everyone. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. It is Sivan 8. It is the lunar Shabbat, the real Shabbat, uh, the Shabbat as described in Scripture. And I'm Rabbi Vincent P. Adams, and Navia Leslie Adams, my lovely wife, will be joining us in just a second here. Uh, today's teaching is entitled Biblical Vibrational Healing. But before we begin the teaching, I'm going to blow the shofar because as we are commanded in Scripture to blow the shofar on the Holy Shabbat before we go into battle and other more deems. So here we go. Barukatah, Yahweh. Eloheinu Malek, Ho'olam, Asher, Kitsunu, Bumisvatah, Vizivanu, Al Mitzvah, Shofar, Vishen Yeshua, Amin. Scatter your enemies, O Lord. Just fire up the computer here, get the programs that I, we want to use. Okay. Almost there. That should do it, I hope. It, I'll wait and see. Oh, here we go. Okay. Well, last time that we were together was Friday, Sivan 6, and as I just said, this is Sivan 8, Sivan 6, according to the um, Jewish civil calendar that most Jews like myself use, was Shavuot. I know we have various discrepancies in when Shavuot is compared to the Jewish civil calendar and that is due to differences in, in interpretation. I have a series on our YouTube page. Our YouTube page is entitled Ed's High M Healing. Is it he Healing? Ed's High M Healing? Is that the exact title? Yes. Okay, I know it's I am is in it, and the particular teaching is basically a ten-part series. Actually, it will say eight parts, but then I got eight A, eight B, and eight C, I think, and it's entitled "The Real Shabbat." And if you study that series all the way through, taking good notes and studying along with the scriptures. You'll see why I come up with Shavuot being on Sivan 6. You might interpret some of the scriptures differently, but I, I think you'll at least see my rhyme and my reason for doing what I do. By my best interpretation and years of study, Shavuot should be Sivan uh, six. And one of the reasons why I think it's so important to know when the real Shabbat is, is that 
going back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 there is a special cosmic opening on the Shabbat Rosh Kodesh and then every, each month and then every seven days after that and the various Moedims or feast days or appointed times if you study scripture you will notice that Yeshua performed most of his miracles on Shabbat it's a special time it's a, healing can take place anytime a miracle can happen anytime, anyplace 24-7 but it is, it is a lot more efficacious it is easier to affect healing on Shabbat than, than it is on other days. So, you know, and especially to you people out there who are always yelling at me, well, why don't you just do things the way Yeshua did? Or they'll say Jesus. Well, I am to some degree, and as I told you on Friday, I'm not supposed to. I'm supposed to do greater things. But there is a time when these things can be done a little easier than at others. So I'm just trying to go with the wind here. And that the wind is um, the Ruach HaGadesh and the biblical scriptures. But getting back to uh, our topic today, uh, biblical vibrational healing, I want to stress the importance of vibration how it is essential to your healing. It's essential to your very being. To your physical body, your emotional body, as well as your uh, spiritual body. You're a triune being, you are a spirit, you have a mind and you live in a body. And vibration is the key to all of that. And just to prove that to you, go to Genesis Let's go right, right to the beginning of things. Go to Genesis chapter 1. And go down to verse 3. And God said, right there, and God said. And throughout chapter 1 of Genesis, what's going on? Creation. How does each facet of creation begin and God said and God said and God said so vibration what is said voice language vibration what is vibration right vibration on the level of physics or even quantum physics is a wave Okay, what is light? A wave. Different sections of the spectrum of light. Light and sound are unanimous. They are both waves. So, vibration is essential to your very being. You, re you were created out of vibration and God said let us make man in our image and God said let there be light and, and it just goes on and on and God said and God said vibration vibrational energy waves absolutely essential to your very existence. Your essence is that of vibration. That is your very essence. Therefore, for you to be healed, we must restore your essence to be the most effective. If we can bypass the flesh, the internal organs, per se, and go to the very essence and deal with 
whatever ails you, from that level, healing can be effective or affected a little bit more efficaciously. And then, you know, if you've been following our ministry, SIM, for any length of time at all, you know that we're very big proponents of vibrational healing, vibrational ministry. We uh, have live events where we play crystal singing bowls, Tibetan bowls, holy shofar. You saw me blow one today. We have about eight or nine different shofars that we blow in order to affect healing and to bring about, how should I say, a restoration of mind, body, and spirit. As I went over Friday in a little discourse with my son, we were, I was asking him, what happens when two waves meet? If they're in phase, there's an amplification. If they're out of phase, one is up here and one is vibrating down here somewhere, then the wave that is the lowest is going to cancel the effect of the higher wave. And then you're just going to get distortion and noise. In a way, that's what sickness and disease is. The internal organs are out of phase. They're not coming together and having an amplification, which we can describe as being health. They're out of phase. There is distortion. And shh, instead of so a nice vibration. When we play the crystal singing bowls, we are attempting to overcome that, that distortion and boost the frequency, the amplitude, and bring the body's natural vibrations back into harmony and balance or phase, if you will. Okay? So we've you know, been pretty successful in doing this. One of the reasons why, we're success, why we are successful in doing that is because when you are using sound therapy or vibrational therapy, you're not only affecting, let's say, the essence of the body on a vibrational level, you are also affecting the emotions of an individual. So you're bringing healing to someone on at least two levels. And by affecting their emotions, you have an effect on their spirit. Because this noise and distortion, the spirit cannot hear or maybe translate or transfer what it knows from the Father into the body because of that distortion that is taking place in the body. Now, what causes that distortion to begin with? That's, it's kind of, it, the question is almost like, which came first, the chicken or the egg, to some degree? Because all sickness and disease are rooted in a spiritual condition, or lack thereof. All sickness and disease are also rooted in the emotions. Usually the distortion of the spiritual, because it is the spirit that quickeneth, according to scripture. But if that message from the spirit is coming into distortion, then what did I say? Two waves meeting and they're out of phase. You just get more distortion, more sickness, more disease. Spirit can be saying one thing to you, 
But your mind, what you believe is the truth, or you're just plain ignorance about a particular situation, is grieving your spirit. Pretty soon, your emotions will come into uh, play, and then ultimately your body will be presenting a particular type of disease or infirmity, malfunction, or what have you. Um, Sister Leslie and myself, are we're pursuing our master's and our eventually our doctorate in oriental medicine. Uh, we've been doing this now part-time, off and on, uh, since uh, the fall of 2017. We'll be, we took a, uh, some time off uh, last year, starting uh, last fall, and we will be resuming our studies uh, this fall in 2020. And we've been kind of getting ready for that, you know, studying our material again. We're changing our program. We're going to be studying a form of oriental medicine that deals with the spirit and the emotional aspect of the individual as well as the body, the psycho, spiritual, and emotional aspect of the human being. And one of our books, a uh, um, book is really changing my life, is called The Seven Emotions. And in it, the author describes the Chinese character the Chinese letter, you've seen Chinese letters, as having a component. This Chinese, the Chinese uh, language or caricatures are similar to Hebrew. They are meanings within meanings, words within words, and they're pictorial. The Chinese word or character for emotions has a character inside of it that means music or notes because the 4,000 years ago when their language was forming and they were codif codifying their medical to translate the fact that your emotions are really notes like music or vibrations. And that's consistent with everything that Sister Leslie and I have been learning about healing from all the other sources that we've learned it from, whether it's the Bible or what some people might call New Age doctrine, alternative medicine, or what have you. Your emotions are notes, just like on a musical scale. Every emotion has a particular frequency to it. And whatever frequency that particular emotion is will affect a particular part of the body or a particular internal organ. Grief tends to affect the lungs. Worry, pensiveness tends to affect the spleen. So various emotion, if, if you are overly depressed and satin, you're going to wind up with lung issues, asthma, and other things that affect the lungs. If you're worrisome or you overthink particular situations, you're going to affect your spleen. If you're prone to being angry, that's going to affect your liver. So all of these various notes affect different parts of the body. But they are first felt in the heart. And the heart is said to be the residence of Shin, S-H-E-N, or spirit. 
What does the Bible say? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. God, above all, guard what? Your heart. Because out of it flow the issues of life. So whatever emotion you're feeling, you first feel it through your heart, or in your heart, then your heart distributes that particular vibration to the particular organ. Grief lungs, worry and fear, overthinking to the spleen, anger to the liver. Out of the heart flow the issues of life. So what determines what emotion you feel? Your spiritual beliefs. Your faith, level of faith, or lack. Whatever you believe, whatever you put inside your mind, does it agree with spirit? Does it agree with the, the Holy Spirit and God's Word? Or are you adopting a doctrine that is more worldly? Get even. Get revenge. Be mad. Be angry. Be sad. Be depressed. You decide. And it's based on your belief system. So, with that said, you know, I found that so interesting that each emotion has a vibration. I had already learned from uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Lipton in his book, um, what is his book title? The Biology of Belief. The Biology of Belief. Remember, I just got through talking about belief. Whatever you believe, whatever emotion you decide to adapt, there is a biochemical or biohormonal signature to that belief or that emotion. Every belief has an emotion attached to it anyway. So... If you believe in getting mad, you, you believe in getting anger, angry or, or whatever, whatever your predominant uh, reaction to life is, you're going to produce certain hormones. You're going to produce a hormonal cocktail that's distributed throughout your entire body. What note are you distrib What note are you playing for your body? What note is being distributed to your lungs, your heart, your kidney, your spleen, your pancreas? Whatever that note is, we figured it out. It's, it's well documented now. Whatever note you're playing, we know which organ is going to be affected. When Sister Leslie and I sit down to counsel someone and we talk to them ask them what has been going on throughout their life and how does that make them feel and you know what was your reaction to this trauma because everybody goes through trauma everybody goes through abuse what note do you play as a result of that trauma and abuse when we sit down with an individual and we figure out their symphony so to speak we know where the issues are going to lie for their healing. And the Chinese knew this 4,000 years ago when they began to put acupuncture together. So that's kind of uh, my introduction. We see the importance of vibration just going through Genesis how your very essence is vibration because it began with and God said and then you were created out of that let me uh, further prove that to you go to Revelation chapter 4 
How many of you agree with me that when you're in the presence of God, there can be no sickness or disease? Speak up. Let's say, yeah, amen. Absolutely. Something. Yeah. Okay. His vibration, because he's a vibration, his vibration will is so powerful. His anointing is so potent that it will, it just wipes any other vibration, you know, out of the picture. So in the presence of God, there can be no sickness or disease. No poverty or lack. Only abundance, life, health, and happiness. It's impossible. Anything else just gets obliterated. That's why the Bible says our flesh, you know, the Bible says no man can see God and live. His vibration is just going to obliterate us because we're full of all this trauma. Ever since Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, of the forbidden tree, trauma came into the world. All kinds of, what do you call a missed note? Enoch used to be in the choir. What do you call a note that's not right? A note that's not right. You just oh, call it a note that's not right. Just, just call it off. Okay. Off. There's so out many key. off out notes. Of key, yeah, out of key. Out of key. There's so many notes that are out of key, off, whatever musicians call it. We're full of them, all of us, me, you, we're full of this. That's why we get sick. That's why when I was talking about communion uh, Friday night, Friday evening, how when you take communion, it's an attempt to get the vibration of God back in you. But you have to be willing to allow that to happen. You have to have that consciousness. Or else it destroys you slowly. As the scripture says, this is why many are sick and weak and do sleep. Because they didn't discern the Lord's body. His body cannot harmonize with your body if you're holding on to bitterness, unforgiveness, sadness, grief, sorrow. It, it kills you over time. But in Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, okay, let's go to starting, I guess at verse 3. Now, Revelation chapter 4 is the throne room. It's a description of what is going on in the presence of God in heaven or in New Jerusalem, whatever you want to call it, right now. It's, this is a throne room description. God the Father is on the throne. The Lamb is in the throne. This is what it looks like. Okay. Now, John's, I'm going to read it, and then I want someone to tell me what, what is John's first description about the throne. Starting at verse 3. Let me quit perpetrating. <laughs> and get real. Okay. And he that set it. And he that set was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. All right? And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And, okay, now we get down to the throne itself. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. 
Okay. I want to get two or three opinions here. What is Yokanan's first descriptions, I'll say the plural, first descriptions about the throne? Can they see? Elderly men. Mm hmm. Elderly men. You said a rainbow? No, elderly men. Elderly men, that's what you notice? Okay. About the throne? Yeah, about the throne. The lightning? The lightning. The lightning. Lightning, Light. lightning or thunderings? Which one or both? Both. Set them both. So both. Lightning and sound. Okay. Anyone else? One, one more. No. The very first thing it said in the scriptures mentions the crystals, the garden stone. Garden stone and the rainbow. Okay. But that was. Is that the throne room though? That's what I said. I don't know specifically, right? So around about it, there's a rainbow going around on the throne. This, as I'm sitting here now, imagine I'm sitting on the throne. And there's a rainbow just going, a complete rainbow going around me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what I noticed the most, for some reason, that struck me when I read this years ago about the throne is, is what proceeded out of the throne. Can you, anybody tell me what proceeded out of the throne? Sounds. Sound. Mm -hmm. All right? So, in other words, out of the throne is vibration. So in the presence of God, you know, what is what on earth is louder than thunder? Huh? A volcano? <laughs> I don't I don't think you say a volcano, maybe. We said a NASCAR racetrack. NASCAR racetrack? It's loud. I think the I think the only thing even man made, I think the only thing louder uh the loudest thing on earth, I believe, was thunder. That's not man-made? Man-made man -made or otherwise, I, be, I believe the loudest thing is thunder. Because I've, I've heard, you know, race car sounds. I haven't really heard a volcano. Maybe a few things on TV, but I haven't been there, when, you know, when a volcano erupted or whatever. But I know thunder, you know. Sometimes, you know, people said that the thunder sound is like it was just outside the window. You know, I mean, whew, I think there's nothing louder than thunder on earth. Okay. So, thunder, thunderings coming out of the throne. Wow. The, you know, think about the energy, the vibration coming from the throne. So, you're in the presence of what When we read scripture... What happens when people have an encounter with God? They fall out on, you know, race cars, you know, roaring, doesn't, doesn't scare anybody, it's loud. Huh? They have their headphones on. It's not all the time, you know, and I, I can tell you if you are in the landing or the takeoff zone of an, air, an airport, that's... That's way louder than uh, NASCAR races, but it's still nothing like thunder. It is constant. Okay. Thunder, you know, thunder is um, by and far, in my opinion, the loudest sound on earth, man-made or otherwise. Now, so you're in the presence of God. Thunder, lightning. Voices, and you know, some translations say it's cries, screeches, all these various vibrations. And what else? Lightning, light, rainbow, light, crystals. What are crystals? Rocks. Huh? Rocks. Rocks. <laughs> Rocks. Rocks, no, but what, what, what is the quality of a crystal? Shiny, okay. Rare. It, 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 it reflects light. All crystals are giving off a vibration. It, it, that's, that's their purpose, is to emit a vibration. So what did I tell you? 
What, what two things that I say were equal to each other? Light and sound. They're all waves. So everything about the throne is about vibration, frequency. It's vibrational frequency. In the form of sound, in the form of light. Now, I didn't read it. You, you said the 24 elders. I didn't read it, but tell me, see if you remember. What do the 24 elders do? I don't know. You don't know. In the scriptures, it says that all they do 24 hours a day without stopping is praise God. All they do is say, Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. Holy, holy, holy. That's all they do. Everything in here, and we didn't see it here, but it's, the throne sits on a, a, a crystal sea of glass. It sits on a sea of vibration. And then it says there are seven spirits, or you know, seven lights that burn brightly in front of the throne. Waves. Vibration again. So this whole thing is about, this whole scene is about vibrational energy. When we get, when we take it all the way down to its essence. And this vibrational energy is what heals us. It's what created us. We came out of this. So, in order to be restored to our original, let's see, you guys are my, like my little computer guys and everything. What do you do when uh, the hard drive crashes or you got a problem and you got a, what do you call it, a reboot, what, re something to the hard drive? Yeah, reset. reset. Huh? Reset. 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 Yeah. When we need healing, what do we need? What is that? We need to be reset. We need a reboot. What, you know, when you reboot something, what do you do? You you go get the original programs, wherever they are. If they're stored on the cloud, if they send them to you on the disk, or whatever. You go to the original. I like to look at it like that. You didn't hear it. What? Repent. I like it. What? Repent. Repent? Repent. Yeah. Repenting is a, it is a reboot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But getting back to this throne room scene here. When we do vibrational therapy, when we play the crystal singing bowls, when we play the gongs, when we blow the holy shofars, and the other, um, we do it in accordance with certain musical notes that coincide with the chakras. The chakras are described in Revelation chapter 12. The auras are described here as the seven spirits of God in Revelations chapter 4. We play notes on each bowl. It's not random. We play notes that restore or reboot the chakras and the auras and that have an effect on your emotions and restore your internal organs. That's the reason we have sound bath. We're trying to reboot your entire system, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. All of that is going on at these various levels. So vibration is an essential key to healing. Remember the title of, of, of this message or this teaching, Biblical Vibrational Healing. I said we blow holy shofars. You may say, well, how are crystal singing bowls um, biblical? Well, what about the shofar? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, that Yeshua's voice 
is as the sound of a mighty shofar. There you go. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, Revelation chapter 1, verse 15, says that Yeshua's voice is as the sound of many waters. I like to think that when I'm playing the crystal singing book, that that mm, it, it's like a large waterfall like Niagara or I think what is it Lake Victoria in Africa you know like the waterfalls there and you know you've gone to the Mount Mall and heard a waterfall that shh, con, you know it's no break the water is it, it never stops shh, whatever and the singing bowl is like that we can play it and, mm, 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 mm. and you know make, the faster we go the louder it goes we can stop and it begins to dim mm, and fade away when you approach a waterfall you first hear the slight hum then as you get closer and closer it increases so I tend to think of when we play the crystal singing bowls, this, you know, the voice of many wars. And of course, when we blow the shofar, we know that that's the voice of Yeshua. And we always bless the shofar before we blow it. So, we have this restoration of sound. We also use tuning forks. Tuning forks produce a very loud, audible sound. Some tuning forks, if you know how to get that sound out of them in different, you know, frequencies and notes. We can also take a tuning fork that has been tuned to a specific frequency that the Holy Spirit has told us that if we use this frequency on this part of the body, it will concentrate the vibration needed for healing to that part of the body. We also use the Tibetan bowls to put on a person's body to, co to cover large areas of the body at once and then strike and play the bowls on someone's body to produce a myriad of complex sounds because we can see from the throne room all kinds of vibrations are coming forward. Voice, light, you know, thunder, lightning, that vibration, the crystals. Remember, it sits on a sea of crystal. That vibe. So if you're in the presence of God, you've got vibrations coming up through your feet from that sea of glass. You're getting it exteriorly into the body as it bounces off your body, penetrating the inside, your ears, it is said that, especially in oriental medicine and, and also in other um, alternative modalities, that every internal organ in your body is connected to a nerve in your ear. So when you hear certain noises or certain frequencies of sound, it has a heal. It, it can, if, if it's in phase, if it's in tune, if it's not an off note, it can heal your internal organs. I don't know if you follow the news. Uh, this is constantly in the news every so often. How personnel at our embassies say in China and in Russia, in the countries um, when we have an embassy in the country of our enemy, people get sick who work in the embassy. And they figured out what gets them sick. The Russians, the Chinese, they're projecting sound inaudible they're projecting inaudible sound waves into the embassy. They're beaming it from a distance right into the embassy to cause mental disorientation and physical illness. 
So a note out of phase, an off note, a note out of tune can kill you or make you extremely ill. I mean, these people had to be sent back home. They were, they were about to die. It can cause cancer. The Russians, the Chinese, they're using this technology against our embassies. Now that's a scientific fact. So if a note out of phase and out of tune and off can kill you and you don't even know it, you don't hear it, you don't necessarily feel it until it's too late. If an off note can do all that, what can a note that is in tune, that is in phase, do to you? It can heal you. It can give you mental clarity, spiritual clarity, so that you can hear the still small voice. So vibrational healing is, is real. And as we can see, it's biblical. Now, when I first started, when I first kind of caught some of the revelation here in Revelations chapter 4, we were going through something as a family that um, I don't know if you guys remember, but as a family, we were getting into astrology. Back in, uh, see, whoop, whoop. Back in Tulsa, yeah. It was when we were in Tulsa. And we were, we joined the Astrology Society there in Tulsa. We went to some lectures at the uh, University of Tulsa. And when I went to one of the lectures at the University of Tulsa, and they described Enoch, my physicist here, all of this light and sound, what is that reminiscent of in, in, uh, in physics, in, in astrology, physics? astronomy? What astronomy. astronomy. What is that reminiscent of? You're talking about the stars? Maybe. What is it reminiscent of? Light and sound. A lot of energy. Light, sound. Like nebulas? No, mm, not a nebula. Something where there's a lot of energy. Remember I said that... a lot that, of energy in nebulas. Okay. It's where stars are born. Your moment just said, where stars are born, how are stars born? From the gases colliding. What has to happen for a, a star system to be born? Um, where does the nebula has, come from? Um, the death of other stars. What is the death of a star called? A supernova. Oh, give him a donut. <laughs> <laughs> this whole, when I was sitting there in the lecture at the University of Tulsa, this whole chapter of Revelation chapter 4 reminded me of a supernova. Enoch, huh? Yeah, we went to we went to it when we joined the Astrological Society. We went to uh, they had a meeting at the University of Tulsa, and had one of the professors give us a lecture. Okay, and I said all that light, all that sound. What is in a supernova? You kind of said it already, some of. What else is in gas? Light. And what comes out of the supernova? Um, stardust. Stardust? Yeah. Okay. What happens to that stardust? What else is, comes out of the supernova? Um, like, do you mean the result? Or like, what just yeah. comes out? What are the results? The final results of a supernova? Either a white dwarf or a black hole. Out of a supernova? What yeah. about all the gas, the dust? Oh, you mean the, the nebula. Nebula. What comes out of the nebula? Stars. Stars. What else? Um, sometimes planets. Planets! Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Boy, 
got to yeah. pull it out of the planet, <laughs> the earth itself. If you remember Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, we're made from the dust of the ground. A lot of people say we, we are all nothing but stardust. What did I say earlier about the vibrations? It's our essence. It is what we're made out of. You can look at it in terms of a vibration, or you can look at it in terms of a supernova, and all the gases, all the dust from that supernova eventually coalesces together to form a planet that they like to call the Big Bang Theory. Don't get mad at me out there, Christians, okay? There's truth in this, okay? And I believe God created the earth, he said, and God said, and he calls all this to happen, all right? So I'm not an evolution, you know, I'm, I'm not a, Dow, a Darwinist or something, okay? Don't go there. Um, stay here in this, in this context. So our essence Revelations chapter 4 is our essence. So that means that out of this situation, what is there? There's gold, there's silver, there's precious metals. Everything for health and prosperity. Okay? Now, and, you know, we've talked about the notes that emotions play. I want to go to um, a script. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Now this will further support my claims. You hear our neighbor's dog barking there, don't worry. There are dogs on the planet. Don't be alarmed. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And this is a very misinterpreted scripture, or misread. Or very few people really pay attention to it. I'm going to see what... Follow along with me very closely. Listen very closely. No trick here. I'm just going to ask you at the end... What it says is not a trick, but I'm going to ask you, what did you receive? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. One more time. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they said, what did you hear when I, what did you receive? What did you understand when I read that scripture? They heard his voice. They heard his voice. And what else? In the garden. In the garden. What was, okay, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Anything else? He's near? Huh? Mm -hmm. He's by? He's near them? His what? He's near them. He's nearby. He's nearby. Why do you say he's nearby? Because they heard him in the garden. Heard him in the garden doing what? I don't know. Walking. Making stuff? Huh? Walking. 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 Some of you say walking. Okay, Boaz, you're looking at me like you know. What did you get? Um, I just got that they heard his voice when he was walking. In Notice what he said. He got that. I just got that they heard his voice when he was walking. Correct? Yeah. Okay. What did you get, Melchizedek? It's not that they actually saw him. They just heard huh? Him. It's not that they actually saw him in there. They just heard some, like his voice from the garden. Is that him walking? You heard him walking. Yeah. God walking. Okay. Does it say God's walking? No, it doesn't. It's just his voice is walking. Okay. That's really good. He's about the first human being besides me, I think, who's in about 10,000 Jewish rabbis through the centuries or whatever. 
It says, and they heard the voice of God walking. Most Christians would interpret that scripture the way Boaz did. It was certainly the way that I interpreted it for 50-some years probably. Because in our human experience, what do you hear? When it comes to walking, you hear footsteps, right? We associate walking with footsteps. And if you put sound to walking, it has to be footsteps. So when we read this, and we don't pay very, very close attention, and say, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. We think they heard God's footsteps. They heard God walking or breaking branches or something as he came through or something like that. But what it really says is that they heard the voice of God. They heard his voice and his voice was walking. Okay? Now, most Jewish commentaries quit, uh, catch that. It is only Christians who usually don't quite get that or read over it, or if they do get it the way Nehemiah pointed out, they don't care. You know? So what? Uh, I'm going to, I'm um, looking at a traditional Jewish uh, rabbinical commentary. And I'm going to turn to page 53 in here. All right. We'll read verse 8. Now, we ju you just heard um, uh, the King James Version. Now, let's... Uh, a traditional rabbinical uh, translation. And they heard the voice of the of the Lord God going in the garden. It doesn't say they heard the voice of God walking in the garden. They heard it going. They heard the voice moving in the garden. And the commentary on it says, And they heard. What did they hear? They heard the voice of the Holy One, blessed be he, which was going in the garden. The voice itself, the vibration of God's voice. God is a vibration. He himself, his voice, of course his, his voice is a vibration, but they actually heard the voice as it went from place to like it's a separate entity. Okay. Uh, where's for, where's for, okay. Now I want to read you another interpretation from a Kabbalistic commentary. And this is Tezur Hamor. Right there. And if you want to go out and spend the money and buy, you know, the volumes that I've purchased. This is volume two, Genesis, no, volume one, Genesis volume one, page 92. And this is a commentary, a Kabbalistic commentary on Genesis chapter three, verse eight. Okay. says, this verse, among the other lessons it teaches, also reminds us of the absolute unity of Hashem, God. That is, His essence and His voice are inseparable. The absolute unity of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what did it say? The essence of God, 
who God is and what he is, all his attributes, all his qualities, all his promises of healing and prosperity cannot be separated from his vibration or his voice. Let me read it one more time. Page 92. Think about that. That, that takes some sitting in, okay? That has to kind of, you got to soak on it. Our verse among the other lessons it teaches also reminds us of the absolute unity of Hashem. His essence and His voice are inseparable. His sounds, His essence. When we call down the vibration of God into our presence, the sounds of God into our presence, with the holy shofar, the crystal singing bowls, and pure note vibrations. We are calling healing. We're calling and conjuring up and invoking and bringing forth the very essence of the Creator, the very essence of creation itself in order to restore our health, our mental and emotional balance. Yeah. Do you see that? Okay. Now, what is enough, other than the sound baths that I just talked about, there are some other ways that we can the scripture gives us a hint and a clue of. I think, um, how long have I been going? We started a little bit. It's been, been an hour. I, I think I'm, I'm going to stop there today. Yeah, it's been an hour. Exactly. Mm -hmm. A little less than an hour. I have to start delivering these messages in about one hour bites anyway. So I'm going to stop there today, and next week we're going to pick up here, and we're going to, we know that we can use the holy shofar, we can use the crystal singing bowls, we can use tuning forks, and other things that can produce a clear note in order to invoke the sounds of the throne room that we see here in Revelations chapter 4. There are some other godly or God-given mechanisms or methods or modalities to produce those notes within our body. And I'm going to go over those uh, next Sunday, the next Lunar Shabbat. We'll meet again. I'll, I'll post a note. We'll, we'll either start at 3 or we'll either start at 4. We started at 3 Friday. And we started at four today. I'll think about whether, you know, but it, it'll be posted whether we start at three or four. And this message will be recorded in full on our YouTube channel at Zion Healing. But before we go, if you want, I'm going to pray over the elements as I did on um, Friday. And we're going to take them. This is one of the best ways to get this throw room scene into our body. Okay? Abba Yahweh, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, Ruach HaKadosh, come down in power upon the elements of the Holy Communion table. Fill the unleavened bread with your body. Renew your presence in the Holy Masters. Fill the cup of the fruit of the vine with your blood and the total essence thereof. For your word says that your blood speaks, but it speaks a better thing than the blood of Abel. And your word also says that your voice is as the sound of a mighty shofar, 
and many wars. That the shofar sound of the voice of your blood and many wars be heard throughout our entire triune being. And by reasoning of our partaking of this holy and divine meal, let it heal every cell, tissue, organ, bodily system, and structure within our triune being. And let it do the same thing for us today that it did for our forefathers on that faithful night in Egypt. Let it grant us total peace out so that the death angel and any pandemic must simply peace out pass us by. And now we'll partake of the body and blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, life and life more abundantly. Shalom.